So let's let's get on with the topic. So what is the topic? The topic is Allah and the womb, and okay. um, yeah, and why it is that it triggered a lot of um, not very nice feelings from Muslims. So, um, according the Islamic tradition, according the Islamic tradition, Allah has face. Today we are going to focus on the womb and the, what is this womb. But we will let's just give quick background. Allah has face. Allah has eyes. Allah loves. Allah. It's good that like Allah li likes it, making people. People make people are making jokes and then Allah thinks they are funny. Um, Allah has hand. Allah has two right hands. Allah has palms. Allah has form. Allah takes his best form. Allah what? has fingers. And Allah has palms. Allah Allah has fingers and Allah does handshake. Allah has physical eyes and physical ears. Allah sits on a physical throne which has been carried by angels. And Allah has shin. Allah moves around. Allah time to time Allah comes and then checks the word out what's happening in his creation. Allah has a waist. And Allah has food and Allah, of course, has shade. Okay. So that's kind of basics on basics on Allah. We will be focusing on the one which is identified as Allah and the womb. That's what we are going to focus on. Uh, and of course, uh, we all know that uh, Allah, with all these body parts that Allah has, uh, He says in the Quran, "There's nothing like Him." Yes, nothing Surah in creation, for, creation. Yeah, Surah 42. There is nothing like Allah. But yes. um, uh, Salafi Muslims kind of takes those attributes are like physical. Even like if you, um, we didn't go through, but if you look read the hadiths, which I put, Allah has ears, Allah has hands, all those Allah has shin. When individual narrator is describing those hadiths, he's like physically showing his ears, he's physically showing his like um, shin um, to make a point. Yeah. Let's read the first hadith, okay? So we will start with the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 7502. Allah's Messenger said, Allah created the creation. And when he finished them, from his creation, the Rahim, okay, that's the womb, got up and Allah said to it, stop, what do you want? It said, at this place I seek refuge with you from all those who sever, me, sever with me. Allah said, would you be pleased, would you be pleased that I will keep good relation with the one who will keep good relation with you and i will sever the relationship with one who will sever the relationship with you it said yes oh, oh my lord allah said to it this is for you and then abu Bak abu hurara recited the verse of surah 47 verse 22 when allah created the creation he finished then this womb stood up so it shows you the importance of this womb uh, and it got up and um, then Allah said what stop or what you know what do you want and and then it says it's just so bold in speaking to Allah at this place I seek refuge from you so it's demanding uh, from all those who sever me so so do I we think, know do we know who is whom is this? We don't know whose womb is mm -hmm. this. We don't know. We all we know is what it is. We know that it is a womb. Well, we should call it the womb. It's not a womb. It's the womb. Uh, in the Arabic, it's ar rahim The. So this is not a womb. This is the womb. <laughs> Respect, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's very important, and it has a consciousness. It's talking. Yes. All sorts of things. So let's let's go to Ibn Kathir. Okay, I'll, I'll start reading. After Allah completed creating the creation, uh, the womb stood up 
and pulled at the lower garment of the most merciful. So, womb, al- womb of Allah yeah. stood up. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. pulled, according to translation, the garment of Allah. So, Allah has a garment. In here, Allah's lower garment. What is lower garment, sister? So, um, when we go through the translation, we'll see that this is not actually the case. But a lower garment is, well, in, in, in today's terms, for men, I guess it's trousers. Um, for women, it's a skirt or trousers. But at the time, they used to wrap um, a garment around yeah. the lower half. Like big scarf, kind of. Yeah, yeah, like you, you, you wrap around. Yeah. And it starts from just uh, just above the hips. Hmm. Where, you know where you put a belt? So That's where the lower garment starts. His lower garment is being pulled down. Yeah, which is very disrespectful. Can you, can you imagine some this womb stepping up to Allah and pulling on his lower garment? If, it, if the womb pulls any harder, Allah will lose his garment. So Let, Let's hope that he had an underwear or something. I just, <laughs> uh, Muslims. Help us out. This womb is so disrespectful to Allah right now. This is according to Al Bukhari by Abu Huraira that Allah's Messenger said this. So, womb stood up and then pulled down the lower garment of Allah. And then Allah says, Ouch, what are you doing, man? <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, if someone is pulling on your trousers, lower garment, trousers yeah, lower garment. might fall off, you will say, Stop, wouldn't you? It replied, my stand here is the stand of one seeking refuge in you from oh. the severance of ties. So it's not only whom grabs, um, grabs the garment, of, lower garment of Allah, but also speaks and also causes pain to Allah as well. Okay. Yeah, it's very powerful. And has a will, speaks and has a will, demands, I want this. Yeah, notice that it doesn't give Allah any glorification. It doesn't say you're Lord of the worlds, you're God, you know, I come before your throne. Any of those respectful language, it just says, starts demanding things and pulling on him. It's just amazing. And then Allah said, would it not please you that I join whoever joins you and sever whoever severs you? So Allah is trying to please this womb. So first of all, the womb doesn't give any respect to Allah. It starts pulling on him approaching him telling him i want this and allah says i'll give you whatever you want uh, to please you i'm here to please you whatever you want just tell me whatever you want yeah he says uh, he says i'll join whoever joins you and sever whoever severs you uh which is like old lang- language which means basically whoever is good to you i'll be good to and whoever severs you as in whoever cuts ties with you I'll cut tie, I'll cut him basically as well. It's like another another powerful another powerful thing. I am here to please. All I am here to please. Which is not how you expect God to talk, isn't it? And then of course Woom replies back. Yeah. It says yes, indeed. So she, it, the womb is happy now with this. And then Allah says, you are granted that. So he, it, once the womb is happy, Allah said, okay, the womb is happy, we'll give, we'll give her that. I'll give he or she, it, whatever, that. Abu Huraira then added, read if you wish. So would you perhaps, if you turned away, spread corruption on earth and sever your ties of kinship? Uh, so then um, well, Abu Huraira says, this is basically the, Meaning of the verse, Surah 47, verse 22. Verily, the womb is attached to the throne. Mm, The womb is attached to the throne. And connecting its ties does not mean dealing evenly with the kinsfolk, but it rather means that if one's kinsfolk, kinsfolk sever the ties, he connects them. This hadith was also recorded by al Bukhari. Um, Ahmed also recorded from Abdullah ibn Amr that Allah's messenger said the womb will be placed on the day of resurrection curved like a spinning wheel speaking with an eloquent fluent tongue so calling he, just a, sorry, 
So womb is like Allah taking different forms. Okay, in here is curving like a spinning wheel, speaking with very good. I don't know, probably Arabic, better, better, better Arabic than Allah. Uh, yeah, this womb is. Well, first of all, it's attached to the throne, so we don't know if it's suspended, like by a rope or something. It's just attached to it. So if you imagine Allah's on the throne, this womb is is very powerful. <laughs> it's attached to the throne, and then it's speaking with this eloquent tongue. It's it's curved like a spinning wheel. I'm not sure what this looks like. I guess the womb is curved in shape anyway, so we know what this looks like. Um, it's just very very strange. Um, it is placed on the day of resurrection and it speaks on the day of resurrection. The one above, um, the one above the heaven will have mercy on you. And Ar-Rahim womb is from Ar-Rahman. Yeah. So whoever joins it, it joins him. So Ar-Rahman is, means like merciful. Mm. Ar-Rahim is the womb. Yeah, this is One another of them thing. Is like name of Allah. Yeah. So it's saying that the name Ar Rahim, which is the womb, is derived from the name Ar Rahman of Allah, which is a little bit of shirk going on here, because it's like derived from Him, this womb, and then it has this shape and it talks and it has authority and it's attached to the throne. So, sister, I see a little bit of a hint of shirk here. Uh, you need to rephrase that, sister. It's not hint of shirk. There is only it's like a proper shirk. shirk. <laughs> that is a so big, Allah, big, yeah. big shirk. Yeah, Allah gives him, gives it or whatever she, her, his name or part of his name, which is a, it's meant to be a divine name, and then he places it attached to his throne. He lets it uh, grab him by the lower garment. He gives it whatever it wants, and. Um, it speaks with a tongue on the day of resurrection, like with authority. So who is this womb? Yes. Good question. What is this womb? Who is this womb? Is it belong to Allah? How come it has power to bring down Allah's garment? And what is the Arabic word for that actually? A lower garment? Apparently it's the vest of Allah. Yeah, I checked the Arabic. Um, it's The Arabic says, uh, I'll say, I'll say it. قامت الرحم فأخذت بحقوي الرحمن. The the womb got up and took hold of uh, the Rahman's waist. The waist. Um, so actually it held on to Allah's body. Um, so that, they get waist, very physical there. That's just not very good at all. Yeah, waist or flanks. So you know the sides. You know, just, just like we mentioned, just above the belt. Uh, this area and um, the translators were too embarrassed so they said lower garment because they didn't want it to look like it's actually holding off of Allah's uh, physique but his garment but that's not actually what it says yeah so I put the I put the Arabic on the screen so p for people to see it yeah the Arabic uh, yeah it comes from the lexicon so it's not me uh, the word is haku Haku is an old Arabic word for waist or flank, the side. You know where you put your hand, let's imagine you put your hands on your hips. When you stood up, this is what the area is on the body that the womb grabbed on, onto. And then from that, Allah says, Ouch, what are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Can anyone help us to figure out who is womb is this? Uh, and who can come that close to Allah, speak to Allah, and his enemies is Allah's enemy, and uh, his um, his friends are Allah's friend. Who can that be? Who is whom is this? Yeah, and um, and of course attached to the throne. And be, like, yeah. logically, like whom is part of your body? We've got. Um... An explanation, Jason El Falso says, DCCR Ministries, the topic is Rahim and Ar Rahman. The etymology of this Semitic word does not refer to the physical womb. Go study first. So hmm. it's not physical. It's not physical. So hmm. when they say womb, what, what did they meant? When, but it's not when physical. It's been translated, when it's been translated as the womb, what did they mean? 
Yes, and when it says like it's on, on the screen, it says it's curved like a spinning wheel, speaking with an eloquent, fluent tongue, calling to severing whoever has severed it. Is that all? Does that sound physical to you? It's saying it's curved. It looks what it looks like. It has a tongue. It speaks. So all that is uh, not physical. Okay, I get you. If it's not that physical, how did it um, pull down the garment of Allah, touch the waist of Allah, which caused pain mm -hmm. to Allah? Allah said, "Oh, stop it!" Yeah. So if the so if the uh, rahim, if the womb is not physical and it didn't do all these actions, that means Allah is not real either, because He said He's speaking to it. So Allah was speaking to Himself, or what? What was happening? Sometimes those things happens. You get to see people on the street; they speak to themselves. Yeah, so this, this this womb is not physical according to Jason Oath also. So this whole story with Allah, Allah was just speaking to himself. So Allah's not real either then if the womb wasn't real in that situation. Thank you for proving that Allah's not real. And it's all imagination. Any, um, or other, yeah, other, my other practical question is, whose womb is this? This all-knowing, all-powerful womb. Who is, is it? Yeah, and actually uh, in Arabic, sister, if you go to the doctors, the ladies, and they, he says, actually, your womb, there's something wrong with it or there's a condition, they actually do use the word ar-rahim, the same word. So it is something physical in our world today. It, in the Arabic language, it is. Yeah, in physical. Turkish, in Turkish, it is the same, like, womb means rahim, yeah. yeah. And also, I have a question for you, sisters. Remember, Allah says, how can he have a son if he has no girlfriend? Where he had a womb all along, why couldn't he use the womb to have the son? Womb is a body part. It's like saying the, li the little toe went up to Allah and said this. This is ridiculous. Oh, well, <laughs> it's, it's all out of love, sister. It's always good to have our Muslim friends, you know.